my name is Ella and I work for the Sussex Wildlife Trust and today I'm going to talk to you about the Sussex coastline. So I'm going to talk to you mostly about the different marine animals and the habitats that they live in. So marine animals are animals that live all or part of their lives in the ocean and a habitat is the natural place where an animal lives. I'm also, also going to talk about some of the special features or behaviours that some animals have developed to help them survive in their habitat, and we call these adaptations. So first of all, let's look at the Sussex coast. It's pretty long, it stretches from Chichester in the west to Rye Harbour in the east, and it's about 145 kilometres long. Now that's about the same as 12,000 buses end to end. So yeah, pretty long. So first of all, we get sandy beaches in Sussex. Sandy beaches might at first seem like there's not much life there, but once you start digging, um, you'll find lots of interesting creatures. It's quite a difficult place to live because the sand is always moving around and the animals that live there have to be able to cope with the tide coming in, so being underwater and the tide going out being exposed. And animals have developed lots of adaptations to be able to survive here. So you might have seen these little funny squiggly casts on the beach before. These are made by lugworms. And what they do is they bury down into the sand and live in a U-shaped tunnel and they eat all the little bits of food, plants and animals out of the sand and then they poo out clean sand. So that's essentially what this is. It's lug lugworm poo and they keep our beaches nice and clean. Um, we also get lots of different kinds of um, sea shell creatures living in the sand. So this is an otter shell. It's a bivalve, which means it has two shells and a hinge. And it has um, a siphon, which is this, uh, which is basically like a tube. So the otter shell will live buried in the sand and it sticks this tube, the siphon, out of the sand and it can reach more than twice the length of the actual shell itself um, and that's so it can reach um, clean water so it can eat and gather all the food from the water when the tide comes in. We also get lots of different crabs living on the beach. This is a masked crab and usually it lives buried just below the surface of the sand. Um, I really like this one because it's got these special long antennae here which act as a kind of snorkel to ensure that they always have a clean supply of water. Um, and they just look great, I think. Um, sandy beaches attract lots of different um, coastal birds. This is a golden plover or plover, and it's actually eating one of the lugworms that we talked about earlier. Um, so they've got this quite long beak, which they stick in the sand uh, and find those juicy worms to eat. Now Sussex, we've got lots of shingle beaches. I'm sure you've been to some of them. Um, shingle is quite a rare habitat around the globe, but we get a lot in Sussex. And uh, we're, we've actually got one fifth of England's shingle. So it's made up of lots of different materials um, that look like, well, they're stones, but they are in Sussex, they're mostly made of flint, which has come from the chalk cliffs. And now shingle beaches are actually a lot harder to live in than sand because things can't bury down, um, worms, they can't burrow down. And it's very difficult to live stuck to all these stones because they're constantly moving with the tides coming in and out and pushing them around. Um, we get a few special plants that can live here and they have special adaptations that means they can survive in this difficult habitat, um, which is why we call it vegetated shingle. So these plants have big root systems to help them keep them stuck to the shingle essentially and keep the shingle packed together. Um, they've also got thick fleshy leaves to help them keep as much water as possible because it's not soil, the water drains away very fast, so it needs to be able to keep that water to survive. Um, so here's a closer up picture of some sea kale, which is one of those special plants. You can see it's got quite fleshy, thick leaves. Um, and shingle is very important for some birds because they lay their eggs 
only in shingle and nobody nowhere else. Um, this is a ringed plover. Now there's actually some eggs in this picture. It's very well camouflaged. So they're here. And the birds, they just dig a little dent in the shingle and lay their eggs right there. And then they will nest on the shingle. So yes, very important for some birds. And in Sussex, we are lucky enough to get lots of wonderful rock pools. They are one of my favorite habitats to explore just because you can find so many amazing creatures. Um, it's a little bit easier to live here than shingle and sand, but it's still quite difficult. The animals here have to be able to survive underwater when the tide is in and exposed when the tide is out. So we get lots and lots of different um, crab species living in the rock pools. So crabs um, breathe through gills. They can leave, uh, live out of the water, but they must keep their gills wet so that they can breathe. And they have a hard outer shell um, that helps keep them protected from predators. Now I'm going to show you a little video. It's just a few minutes long. There are lots of different types of crab along the Sussex coast. Here are some that we found while rock pooling. This is a shore crab. They are often green in colour but can be orangey red, like this one. A great place to look for crabs is under rocks. Here we have another shore crab. They have three bumps between their eyes and five spikes on either side of its carapace or shell. This is a velvet swimming crab. They've got bright red eyes and are sometimes called devil crabs for this reason. They're covered in hairs which gives them a velvety appearance. Their back legs are flattened like paddles which makes them very good swimmers. Here's another shore crab. This one is male. You can tell because of their triangular tail flap. This one's lost a claw, but don't worry, he'll grow it back. This is a female shore crab. You can see that her tail flap is much rounder and broader than the male's. She'll carry her eggs under this flap for up to four months. As a crab grows, it molts its shell many times over its life. This one has barnacles growing on it, so we can tell it hasn't molted in a while. This is a broad-clawed porcelain crab. They're quite small and this one is looking for somewhere to hide. Young edible crabs use rock pools as nurseries before heading into deeper water. They're usually brown and the front of their shell looks like a pie crust. There are lots of different. So that was a nice little video there about some crabs, but we get lot, um, a few different uh, fish species we can find in rock pools. So here we have a common blenny that's hiding in a hole. Um, you can see it here. Yeah, just this little face poking out of that hole. They can survive out of water for some time. Um, they're covered in slime to help stop them drying out. Um, and this one is actually guarding some eggs. You can see all these blobs here are its eggs. A female has laid them and this will be a male that's guarding the eggs. And this is a very special kind of blenny that we are lucky enough to get here in Sussex called a tompot blenny. And you can see that it has um, special tentacles on the top of its head, which look a little bit like antlers. Here's another picture. Um, you can see it, the whole fish and there are its tentacles. Now, you may be lucky enough to find a sea slug when you go rock pooling. You need to keep your eyes peeled because they're quite small. And in my opinion, they are 
much more exciting and interesting than the uh, sea, uh, the slugs that we get on land. Um, they have, they've got some very special adaptations. This one, uh, for example, likes to eat animals that have stinging cells. Um, and then when they eat those animals, the stinging cells will pass through their digestive system and the slug will keep the stinging cells at the ends of these bits here. So that if a predator tries to eat it, they will actually get stung. Um, so it protects them from predators. It's an absolutely amazing adaptation. We get hundreds and thousands of barnacles and limpets in rock pools. So here we have the limpet, which is related to sea snails and barnacles, which are actually related to crabs. So limpets will uh, at high tide when the water is in, they will move around eating algae, little plants off the rocks. When the tide goes out, it will push itself really hard onto the rock, trap some water inside to stop it from uh, drying out and its hard shell protects it from being eaten from birds and other predators. Um, barnacles actually live their whole lives um, glued to the same spot. They essentially glue their head to the rock. And then when the tide is in, they will open their little trap doors and little feeding parts will come out and they will grab bits of food from the water. Now we also get whelks, which are a type of sea snail, and these are predators and they eat limpets and barnacles. And they have a specially adapted tongue, which acts like a drill. And they will drill through the shells of limpets and barnacles and then suck up their insides and eat them pretty gross isn't it but quite cool. Now these are two anemones that you can find in rock pools. This is a beadlet anemone here you can see its tentacles just poking out there and this is a snake's snake locks anemone. Um, they have stinging cells at the end of their tentacles which they use to catch food and their mouths are in the center of all those tentacles. Now the snake locks anemone has special protein in its tissues which makes it glow bright green under UV light. Pretty amazing to see. And then of course we've got the open ocean. Now Sussex seas are not grey and empty, they are absolutely bursting full of amazing and often very colourful life. So we're lucky enough to sometimes see dolphins swimming up and down the English Channel. Um, we get bottlenose dolphins and a few other species as well. They like to live in groups called pods and they communicate and find food using sound, which, we, um, which is called echolocation. We get lobsters, so they tend to live on the bottom of the sea floor and they have got two um, claws which are specially adapted for the different foods that they eat. So this one here, you can see it's a bit kind of uh, thicker and that they actually use for crushing the shells of other animals and eating them and this one here look, looks a bit more like scissors and that is for slicing up the flesh of different animals so maybe a fish or the insides of the sea snail they've crushed up with this um, claw so some really cool adaptations there and this is a fish called a cuckoo wrasse. We get lots and lots of different kinds of fish in the sea, obviously. I just wanted to show you this one because I think it's so amazing. It looks like it belongs in the tropical seas. Um, but this is just to show you that you don't have to go to the tropics to see some amazingly colourful fish. You can see them right here in Sussex. Um, and they're just really pretty. This um, is a thornback ray. So we get a few different species of um, skates and rays. And this is a thornback ray. It's got thorns or spikes all over the back of it. You can see some there. Um, and this is for protection from predators. We also have um, a few different kinds of sharks. This is a small spotted cat shark. They have a behavioral adaptation where when they feel threatened, they will curl up into a donut shape. Now this probably is to make themselves look bigger and harder to eat. So that's just a nice quick overview of the habitats and some of the different animals that we find here in Sussex on the Sussex coast. And I've just got a few quick 
quiz questions for you. You don't have to answer them if you don't want to. You can do it in your own time. Pause the video and have a go answering. So can you name two or more habitats that are found along the Sussex coast? Can you name three or more marine animals that live in Sussex? And along with that question, can you name an adaptation that makes that animal special and allows it to live in the habitat that it lives in? And I've got an extra challenge if you want to do it. Again, no pressure, but it might be a fun challenge to do. Can you create the ultimate marine animal with some amazing adaptations to help it survive? So think about where does it live? What does it eat and how does it eat it? Does it swim? Does it walk? How? So I've got it. I've made one myself as an example for you. So I've called it a gulper fish. It's got a big mouth to catch food. Whoops. It's got um, fin, a fin here that looks like seaweed to help it camouflage on the seafloor. It's got spikes on its tail for protection from predators. And then it's got a fin shaped like a foot or a hand to help it walk around the rock pools. So have a go. You can draw it like I have. You could make a model. You could go to the beach if you're lucky enough to live by the coast and make it out of beach materials. You could make it out of plastic bottles, things you were going to recycle anyway, absolutely anything at all. And if you want to, you can send it to us at Wild Coats Wild Coast Sussex at sussexwt.org.uk or post it on social media or get an adult to post it for you using the hashtag Wild Coast Sussex and I would absolutely love to see some of your creations. So thank you very much. Uh, thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.